Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mouse and Merman. Hope you're doing okay. In this video we're going to be looking at an Atco Balmoral 17S which has got a, uh, an engine on it which is, which is no good at all. I can't even get the engine to fire, it won't, it won't start up. I've put a new spark plug in it, I have spark, I've put fuel down the head and it just will not fire at all. I don't believe it's the timing, I think there's something else going on, lack of compression and the, when I pull the engine over it does sound like there's a bit of a knocking noise going as well. So I think this engine is uh, only destined for one thing, is for the scrappy. But I do have a 14S Suffolk punch style cylinder mower, which I got in around about two years ago, free of charge off of somebody, and it all ran. Apart from there's a drive issue, I think. Um, so I'm going to be taking the engine off of that one today and then putting the engine uh, onto this uh, 17S bow model. So if you're looking for a video on how to replace the engine on a Atco bow model, then this is the video for you. Don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack the bell, set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload a video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's get this engine replacement done. Okay, so one Atco Balmoral um, 17S on the bench. This one is, is, a, is a little bit upset of itself. Um, it's not doing what it should be doing. When I pull the cord over on this one, you're getting a bit of a funny noise. Hear that noise? Now, I don't believe it to be the output shaft or anything like that making that noise. I have put some carburetor spray down the head, as I say, and it, it will not even fire. With a new spark plug in, everything as it should be, and the engine is just not doing it at all. It just will not fire. So I've decided to cut my losses with it, um, and I do have a donut engine for it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Unfortunately, to take these um, engines off of these uh, Atcos, they're a little bit fiddly. Uh, there's a bit involved to do it, um, and the majority of the panelling all has to come off. So first things first is to remove your cylinder using the, the two bolts, Allen bolts here and here. Uh, remove that and then take the side panel off, which is if your four screws on the side, and then just, just remove the cylinder out of the machine. Um, I will take the HTD plug off, but to be fair, the machine won't fire anyway, so uh, we're, we're in no, no problems there at all. First thing you want to do is want to remove this, this front cowling and there will be three screws on the front to do that. Hopefully they'll all come undone with relative ease. I'm going to grab myself a little magnet tray because we're going to have quite a few screws coming down. So we've got three screws to remove off this front panel. I don't really want to be using the impact screwdriver to do this because they do tend to round off. God. How far back can I go there? Oh, that was not coming undone. We've got one here as well. That one is. I might turn my table around a minute for you guys, just because you're getting a handle right in the way as well, I think. So I might get a little tiny, in, an old fashioned impact screwdriver on that, because that screw is a, a little bit worn. It's gonna change, just gonna change the screwdriver over find myself a more sensible um, Phillips head. I did have one out yesterday. There's one. Let me try and go just from behind and uh, try and encourage that one out. There it goes. There's a better angle and uh, a bit more force. So I do actually have a a, um, a Kawasaki engine, which would fit lovely on this, but it does involve changing lots of cowlings and bits and pieces, and therefore it's not uh, economical to do. I'm going to turn the machine around to its side. Like so. And we want to remove this top, this top panelling here as well. There's two bolts up here to remove. So 
So there's still lots of good spares on this machine, coils, recoil assemblies, bits and pieces which I can use on, on the uh, on the new engine or just, just have, have the spare parts as a spare engine itself. So I'm not over concerned, I'm not gonna lose anything drastic. That's got a bit of a clip on there. That might lift up out of there. Let's see. That should do. Oop. I shouldn't have to remove that bottom one, surely. Ooh, surely. Let's remove the bottom one as well. Yeah, it's sort of just clipped in there. So that's them four undone. That bottom panel should come away. Yeah, there you go. It's just clipped in there, just on, on this, this little plastic clip just here. So keep all your panelling to one side. All my screws for the panelling are there. I'm gonna put those two screws into those panels so I know exactly where they go for later. Just keep it all together so you know exactly what's going where and who's doing what. Uh, round again with the machine, round to its back, and you've got a, now you're gonna have to remove this back panel as well, but there's a, there's a screw up the top here, which is gonna have to come out. That'll help remove the front cowling. And all the screws are all the same size. You've also then got uh, another one up, up the top here to do as well. That's a better fitting screwdriver that is. I think we'll stay with that one. It's starting to get loose. You've got one here to do and one the other side. So it's just a lot of screws to undo. There's about, about eight or 12 to remove total out of uh, the whole machine. Because you've got to expose um, the engine mount bolts. that one yeah so now the little tiny clip just here at the top end so now that top cowling now comes away but you've still got another couple more to do because you've got a uh, drop a screw there I heard a screw did drop down somewhere that might be there I'll take him out you've got another one down here to do now we're starting to lose a bit of weight off the machine. It wants to tip up now. So this can be done uh, in, a, in, your, in your own shed. You know, if you've got an engine, and a, a blown engine on, on your Atco, then, uh, you know, it, you don't need to put it into a, into a workshop to be done. This can be done from the comfort of your own workshop. If you've got a, a couple of tools, you don't need a great deal. Just a couple of bits, screwdrivers and what have you. There's no, there's no specialist tools required. So it's just a few screws, as I say. Once them screws have all come out, that will then expose all of this panelling. Just like that. Okay, with with all the panelling now removed, uh, we can now start to undo the um, the main drive output shaft. There's a grub screw just in here, which will require an Allen, an Allen key. Make sure it's well fitted, because it can be quite tight. And there's two to do. And without undoing these, you're never going to remove it off of, the, uh, off of the output shaft. So you can remo fully remove a grub screw. If you've got a magnet tray, don't lose them, or just, just back them off, and there'll be another one just there. 
so well fitted. And we're going to undo that. So that's both the grub screws now removed. That was pretty easy. Uh, don't worry about knocking this, this off just yet because when we loosen the engine off, then we can uh, we can then go from there. Now there's two bolts to remove here, uh, one here and one here. Now these are bolted through the um, through the chassis of the actual lawnmower uh, on the side here. Let me get a socket for that and I'll show you. Okay, so with a 13 mil socket and and um, spanner, you can then just fit to underside here. Give that a little turn, just slacken it off. And that will start to loosen off that engine bolt. Working a bit blind here, but I'm used to that. And there's two of those to remove. Just put the nut and there's a washer that goes on top of the engine, not underneath. Put those nut and bolts together into the magnet tray. So if you haven't got a magnet tray, then you know I, I'd recommend getting one. Get a nice big one as well, because uh, that way you're, you're not gonna be uh, struggling for space. I've got two or three. But get a nice big one, because you start to collect all, this, all the nuts and bolts. It's also a, it's a great opportunity then, once this engine comes off, you can then um, have a good clean up because you can see how much grass and build up there is inside this, uh, beside this engine here. That should be it, Mick. Cool. Now that bolt should lift up. There it goes. So that's one side of the engine done. Let me turn the uh, engine round, or the mower around, and we'll investigate the back. Okay, so around the back of the um, of the mower. Now these ones here, I, I found out the hard way, but I'll tell you the easy way. Uh, on these, these are captive. There's a nut underneath here been welded to the chassis, so you don't have to take the roller out. I actually took the roller out on mine. Um, I need to investigate it, and uh, I soon found out that actually he didn't need to. So I took all the roller out, all the ring gears, and all that old stuff. I took the lot out originally, back in the day when I was learning. But there's absolutely no need to do so at all. These are captive. So someone has uh, welded two nuts to the bottom, and all you've got to do is just slacken them off and undo them. So that's a plus. Otherwise, the whole roller has to come out, and uh, although it's doable. It's just a, it's just a, a, a faff that you don't need. There it goes. So we're going to undo this, these two bolts here. Now that will actually release your engine, but there's a few more bits and pieces we have to do just to make sure we get this uh, get this right. Very warm in it though, my fingers have gone to sleep already. There you go, out comes that bolt there into a magnet tray. And as you can see, the engine's now nice and loose. But before we go any further, I want to also now remove this um, this throttle cable because that can't come with it, that's got to come off. So just unscrew the throttle cable housing. Slide that down, do that back up again so you don't lose no bits there, that can all stay, stay as is. That's good, and then just literally, you can adjust the throttle so you get a bit more, a bit more feed off the top of the throttle cable, and then literally just bend it down and out comes the throttle cable as well. So that's the throttle cable now, now off. So apart from that, this dog clutch just down here on this side, that will separate all by itself. It's only just pushed in there, and off comes your little tiny engine. So that was quick and simple. Took about 10, 15 minutes, okay? 
<coughs> the rest of this is all gonna stay exactly as is. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just give myself five, 10 minutes, have a good clean up here, make, make it look a bit more presentable, and then uh, I should go and get the other engine, um, which is off of a Suffolk punch, and it is pretty much exactly the same. Remove the paneling, remove the engine bolts, and remove the throttle cable, and that will then remove your Suffolk punch engine as well. Um, I will show you what the engine looks like. Um, it's not the one with, with the uh, Iron Foundry horse engine on it. It is one with the, with the Decumpsy engine. So we'll show you that very briefly. And uh, let me get cleaned up and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, so just wanted just to show you this very quickly. As I say, I do have a, um, a spare Kawasaki engine, which would turn this into a uh, Atco Barrel 17SK. But unfortunately, the output shafts are different. Oh, the output shafts are slightly different. And also, when you mount this on, the air box gets right in the way, okay? Now, the reason is, is that this um, engine is actually supposed to go further over, okay? As you can see, the, the output shaft there is totally wrong. So, um, the engine runs absolutely beautifully. It doesn't miss a beat, but I should keep the engine just in case I come across another Kawasaki one that needs a bit more work. Um, but as it is, the Kawasaki engine will not fit. It's designed to go mid-engine rather than over, over to the right-hand side. So you can't do that. Trust me, I looked into it. So that's the thing. Um, so that's all now cleaned off um, as best as I can get it. Um, let me just show you what this um, donor machine looks like. Okay, so here's the new donor, or the second-hand donor. Uh, Atco cylinder, it's a 14 Suffolk punch, but has got the Tecumseh engine on top. All you've got to do is remove the panels, as I showed you previously, remove the engine bolts front and back, as I showed you previously, and also remove the throttle cable, and you'll be golden. That engine will come straight off. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it will go straight onto, uh, onto Atco bow mole. We might have a few little changes, but we, we can cross that bridge as and when we come to it. But uh, if you get that done, and then, uh, once you've got your donut engine off, you can buy these off of Facebook for around about 40 quid I've seen them for, which is cheap for a second-hand engine if the engine runs. The actual cylinder, the mow itself might be rusted right out, but you can, you can save yourself a few quid by getting yourself a nice little donor engine uh, for 30, 40 quid off of Facebook. So let me get this engine stripped off and I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, so we are back. Um, engine now off of the, um, the Suffolk or the, the, the uh, Quocast, whatever you want to call it. And... Here is our new uh, donut engine. Oh, two seconds, I have a phone call ringing. Two seconds. Right, so on top of the bench now, we have our Aco Barrel 17S with our donut engine, which came off of a Suffolk Punch style Quocast engine. I've got a clutch um, um, rubber to remove, because it come with two, and we only want one. That's it. And now, hopefully, if I've got it right, and there's nothing saying I have, that should now all slide into place, like so. The holes should all line up magically, like so. I can now get my engine bolts. Now remember, it's a nut and bolt that went on the front with your washer up the top. Do it fit. That one's gone in. That one's gone in. So there's two 13s to do up there. Yes, I'll be giving the engine a bit of a clean off before we uh, enclose it all in, but uh, it's already clean on what it was already. So your nut and bolts go on the front. You've got two grub screws to put on here, but you put them on last once you've done your engine bolts. And then around the back of the machine. And the advantage is, is that your, your donor engine that you're just taking off, all the engine bolts and what have you are exactly the same. Okay, so they're no different. So you can use your donor bolts that you got off of your off of your other machine. Uh, they can go down the back as well. And they're the captive, they're the captive ones. So just give the engine a bit of a wiggle. Lift it up just so just so it finds its home and just start to bite them down. Okay, so when I come back, both all four of his engine bolts will be done up and so will the grub screw. And then uh, I'll see you back in two ticks once I've done that. Okay, engine's now on, um, grub screws are done up, 
and uh, engine bolts are all done. So the engine is now in situ. The only thing I've got to figure out, which is slightly different, is around the back. Uh, on the Quocar style Suffolk punches, the cabling is slightly different. So what I'm hoping to do, I can spin it around, okay. just here, um, they're slightly different. Let me bring you in. Let me bring you in a bit. So you see what's going on. There you go. Right, how's that? Is that better for you? So just here, this is all slightly different, okay? The, 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 this is not the same setup. I've got a slightly different setup on the back of my one. So just to get the other engine on top, uh, on the bench, have a quick little look. It may be a, a light for light swap for swap, we shall see. But uh, I need to find out what's going on first before we can continue, because otherwise I'm gonna have to put another cable onto here, which I don't really wanna do. Okay, so having a quick little look, and actually the one on the Atco Bauer mold is, is simpler. Uh, than this one. So I'm going to take a few bits off. Um, it's mainly the slider is different from what I can see. Just the actual cable setup itself. So until I take it off, I won't know. It's as simple as that, isn't it? So let's take a, let's take a few bits off. There's a few more cables on here than what's actually on, um, on the other one. So as I say, we won't know until we take it all apart and have a, have a look at it. But what I'm hoping to do oh, is undo that. That can all come off. We don't need any of that. That all comes away. Get rid of all of that. That can all come out. All right, that's gone now. So that now looks very, very similar to my uh, Atco Bow Moral, pound for pound. The only difference being is, is that I have a cable uh, holding screw here, which that will go up here. So that looks all that looks different to me so far. So that had gone to there. Let's fit that, let's fit that cable on. Where's my throttle cable gone? Around the side, yeah, that's a cylinder. Throttle cable is that one there. So yeah, this had just another little cradle set up. Um, just very, 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 very slightly different. Not a lot, but now I can poke that into there. It should do the same job, I'd say. It looks like it will. So I want to set that to, to stop all the way down as far as it would go. So that's stop. I mean, I want to, there's a little tiny clip just here, which is your dead man circuit. So that needs to be just in contact with that. So I would say that's going to be about right there. So let's do that up. Nice and tight so it don't slip. That's it. So now, when I ask for throttle, that's on stop, idle, full revs, idle, stop. So that should do the job. Just gonna give that a little tiny scratch up here. There's a bit of grease on there. So I'm gonna clean that up so we definitely get a good, a good contact. So all I've done is just remove the little tiny cradle. That was sat, uh, where was that sat, Mick? That was sat that way round, like that. Just remove that. And all that had on there was a little tiny spring, which could be used for a throttle linkage or something else. And, uh, and that's it, pretty much. Okay, so throttle linkage is now all on and been set, um, and we're happy with that. It seems to be doing everything it should do. So we're quite good there. I don't know anything about this carburetor yet. It used to run, is all, is all I know. So before we go any further, do I put the cowling on? I can still get to that, can't I? Yeah, let's put the cowling back on. Let's do that. Let's, give, let's move this, this old engine out of the way. That's got to be tagged up as no good, because it's no good. And then we can start to put some of this cowling back on and I'll clean it as I go. Um, just so it's got a better, better, better appearance to it. Now there can be a bit of a pickle to fit these cowlings back on, but it's, it's just sort of a question of trying to get a few screws in where you can, and then, um, and then go from there. So as you can see already, let me move that height just slightly, you can see that engine, bang, it goes straight in, see, it fits light for light, so that's cool. Um, so a couple of screws, where's me, let's get me magnet tray back in. All the screws are all the same size, so there's nothing to worry about, okay? 
Phillips screwdriver. So literally just start to hang a few panels on where you can, just get a few screws in and it all sort of just holds itself together once, once you get one or two in. So just start a few off just to hold it in, in, into place. The trickiest bit is a bit where the, where the battery would go if this was an electric start one. That's the trickiest one to do. So I'm just gonna get one or two screws in place. I think that one we've got to leave for, for a minute. Mm, yes, because there's a, there's a module here which is slightly different on this engine. So I might be able to put a screw in there, but the two screws here will hold that all in place is what I'm hoping. Uh, we've got this little tiny plastic box here. Uh, that's gonna go like that. So that's good. So we can get a few screws in there, can't we? So there's just one or two, you know, similarities. There was one or two differences, but nothing, nothing that would would overcome your brain. Nothing that you can't figure out. I'm gonna screw that one all the way in nearly, just just before it bites and just stop. I want to get this top this this top cowling on in place as well. <clears throat> Why that one going? I'm reaching all the way over. I can barely see what I'm doing because the camera's it. But I'm trying to give you guys as much view as possible. It's always harder to try and get views in. I might try and change my view around at some point and come in from the other side. I right, just want to place the um, the top cowling on, <clears throat> just to offer it. That's going to sit there. That's going to bolt onto there. We're happy with that. That's got a clip into. There. There's a little tiny metal clip right in the very, very end where my hand is. It's got to sit in there as it slides under that black bit <clears throat> and I'll put that over top of that one because this this screw here I can't get a screw in there there's a module there so what I'm going to try and do is try and go over the top of that panel that pull cord's stopping me from doing anything that's it so I'm going to go over the top of that panel so when I screw that one down it'll hold that bottom panel that, that bottom panel in place better uh, why not that going down that should go down. That wants to go that little touch. Yeah, that's gone. That's better. Yeah, we're liking that. Yeah, that's gone. Right, so as I said, the only the only one screw you can't put in at the moment is that one just there. Okay? Because there's a module behind it. But do you know what? I don't think it's life or death. It's not gonna be the end of the world. If you're really, really worried about it, you could drill a hole down here and put another one in. Okay. But with that in place, you can now Try and attach the screws in the Now these are quite tricky. I'm not gonna lie to you. They can be a bit of a pickle, because you've got to line them up. And it's got to bite all the way down onto, onto this casing. It's got to all line up. So you're going through two panels and the plastic bit. I think I've got one. I've got one, that's good. <coughs> Maybe there's gonna be another one just over here. Let me get that one. So a bit of wiggling, just to sort of separate the men from the boys. I can see it. We'll get that one to go in. Then we're half laughing. Oh, that's going, I think. Is that going? Yes, yeah, going. Right, that'll hold. That back panel in place now, and now we can do those ones up because we get, we're going to get no chatter from that at all. So the only one screw we can't do up is that one there because there's a model just behind it. Okay. So happy with that so far, and for the sake of a for the sake of a you know a donor engine, are you, are you going to be really worried about it? I don't think you are. Uh, we've got a screw just here to go. That'll hold all of that cowling together. So that'll stop all that rattling. That's good, we can now do this one up. And then this one. They're starting to come together now. Haven't even tested the engine yet. I'm sure it ran though, I'm nearly 100% certain it ran. So all of these can be done up. Okay, now I'm going to turn the machine around because I want to fit 
the front part of the um, of the cowling on, which again is nothing taxing. It's just three screws. So this video is based upon you know the, the average Joe in his workshop. If you haven't got a workshop and not a lot of tools, you know what? For for what tools you need to to do this little job, it's not anything too too much, you know. So you can do it from your own shed. You just got to have the confidence. That's all you got to have. So many people nowadays they just throw stuff away, put it into the fixers, just because they they, they just they haven't attempted it. You know, you, you can't, in this day and age, we can't just say, I can't do it. You've got to educate yourself. Even if even if you're an office worker, you know, work in London and, you, and you've got no tools and you don't like getting your hands dirty, wear a pair of gloves. You know, you just can't, can't say I quit. In my eyes, that ain't good enough. You've got to say how they go. Save yourself 300 quid take your missus out for a nice meal after you cut the grass right so that's them three screws going into place now now I'm going to use a donor cylinder which I've got in another um, quo car style Suffolk punch engine which is a 17 s so I do have a cylinder to go in here um, it's not the one for it but as I say they all fit they all they're all interchangeable one of the fantastic things, you know, nowadays everything is different. Go back 15, 20 years, you know, when people started to make machinery, copy each other, and everything was interchangeable, so we're lucky in that respect. Right, that's all on. That ain't gonna cause us no dramas at all, is it? So we're happy with that. Let's get this side paneling fitted next. Okay, so the side paneling is just as easy. It came off, right, so it goes back on. It's as simple as that. Now the only thing you've got to do is there's a little tiny bar just here. See that little tiny bar? That little tiny bar has got to fit in that slot just there. That's the only criteria you've got. Because that's how you're gonna set your height control. So all you've got to do is as you offer it on, just gently make, line it up so you're roughly in place and then give it a bit of a push and it should go. Like that. And now if you hold that in place and turn your height adjustment, you should see your little tiny, your little tiny thing moving, your gauge, mine is. So I know that's in the right place, okay? That's as simple as that. We can do that, can't we? We can do that. Where's my me, um, me doodad? Here it is. You wanna do these four screws up, or bolts, whatever you wanna call them. Don't go tight, tight, because it is only plastic. Coming together, girls and girls and boys, coming together. I don't know if your engine even runs yet. <laughs> but if you're buying an engine off an eBay or Amazon, or, or not Amazon, but you know, wherever, as long as it says on the, on the, on the selling site, engine runs sweet as a nut, but you know, but the rest of it looks shabby. They sell them for cheap, cheap, 20 quid, you know, free to collector. You could have potentially another engine there. And with the way things are going with battery power, if you don't want to go to battery because you're a petrol head, that's fine. You could buy two or three of them up, take the engines off, keep all the spares. Bucket them up, you know, and you've got spares for years to come, years and years to come, if you decide to stay down, stay down the battery, uh, down the petrol road. Uh, the next one, there's no criteria. Two bolts here and here, that's it. That's all you've got to do, you've got to line them up. So there's a little tiny black, black clip here. This has got to sit inside that black clip. Push that on, and it will, do, it will just pop down all of a sudden, it'll just, it'll just go. That's about it, we're somewhere there. That looks about right. Let's fit that one in place. Oh, got a, grub, got a grub screw there. Don't lose that grub screw because they come off the, old, off the old donor machine, so they're always good to have for spares. So I'm going to wind that one in, just going to hold it into place, get the other one started. You just want to make sure that you've actually got it in place and it's clipped in down the bottom here and won't come out once we've done it up. So nick that one up. Nick that one up. That's got it, I ain't going nowhere. Oh, well, no, it hasn't got it. Not quite got it under that clip there, is it? So that's what come back off. I've got the front bit, but not the back bit. Might have to do it in reverse order. Maybe, baby. 
What's occurring? I got it in then, now it's got it. It just sits on a little tiny, I wonder if I can slide that in there. Can I slide it? It's just a little tiny groove there. It's just got to sit under. Let's give it a bit of a, there you go. It wanted a punch, that's all it wanted. Bit of heavy handedness. Now let's do it up. Yeah. That's better up. Has that got it? Yeah, that's got him. Get it like that. All right, there you go. So that's all now on. Um, I'm gonna go and get the other cylinder out of the other machine now. Just so I've got a cylinder in it, um, and, and it'll be a better weight distributed as well. Um, and all that is just the two bolts on the, on the side, as I said in, in, the, in the previous part of the video, in the first part of the video, just to remove them, them bolts there and the side, the side carriage as well. So let me go get the cylinder fitted. I'll back to you in two ticks. Okay, got the cylinder. To be fair, it was only hanging in there anyway. So and uh, Graham, my old mate, has sharpened it all up already. So it's lush. So now. On a power grey skull. Boom, straight in there. Look at that. Now I know for a fact I've got here somewhere, there we are, I knew I had them, two spare, which would come off the other engine. Two spare um, cylinder retaining bolts. So that can go into there. We can do them cookies up, can't we? This is what I like to do, you know, getting the old machines, break them up, make a good one work. You know, this will do something on a good turn, this, one, this machine, if it all runs, if it all runs, um, we'll be, we'll be golden. Just fighting with this last screw. It's only my Allen key setup, it's just in the way of a cylinder. No one wants to see five minutes of doing a nut up, do they? Right, we're nearly there. But I like to show my videos, you know, start to finish. So if somebody's gonna do this, do this, they can literally get their iPad, put it in their shed, push play, do a bit, Pause it. You need, to see, you need to see the whole process as far as I'm concerned. That's how you do a how-to video. Right, so cylinder's now in place. That's lovely. Um, shall we try and get it fired up? Let's just put a bit of juice down the old head, see what to do. The carburetor does look like it's, um, it's in better days. I've not worked on this engine at all, full stop. Um, haven't touched it. It's been in the store for nearly two years. So let's have a little look, see what it's doing, and then uh, we'll go from there. Right, so we're back. Um, just want to check condition of oil because this engine has been sat for two years in my mower store. Got plenty of oil in there. I'm not smelling no petrol, so I smell oil now, put on my nose, but uh, it's, it's filled up to the right level, which is good. Oil is, is a brownish in color, brownish black, so it's not the healthiest, but it'll go through a service change anyway. Uh, I want my spark plug tool. Oh, this is that one. And all I'm going to do is just test for uh, test for ignition. Make sure we got all the right stuff going on. Spark plug coming out of here is well used, so we're going to get rid of that. And in my uh, broken engine, I have a brand new spark plug, so we're going to we're going to use that. Now already I'm seeing spares on this machine, so I might actually after an exhaust guard for one of my Atcos which I think is on its way up to Pete actually, so I should take that off. 
beforehand and that can go up to Pete's as well because he can have that to, to put that on his new machine up there. So all spares. So a little bit of carby spray going in, which I'm nearly out of. A little bit of carby spray. Now, obviously, if you've got a good engine, you won't need to do any of this, but I don't know what this engine's like, so I, I, I know it used to run. That's all I do know. From what I remember, it used to run quite well, too. Nick that up. HTD boot back on. And we'll go for a little fire. So will this little engine just, just make a noise? Will it at least just do something for me? Which is uh, more than what the other machine ever did. All right, let's give it a pull to what happens. So it fired straight on up. So that's good. So the other engine didn't even do that. I'm going to put some fuel in. I don't know condition of, of, of carburetor at all. Got no idea on that. Let's get some fuel. Sometimes they surprise you. But I don't think I winterized it. So it may get a fuel leak, all that sort of stuff. No idea as of yet. No fuel leaks as of yet, but that's not to say that the, uh, the, 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 uh, it's all gummed up inside. On to choke. We give it a few revs. This is a live fire up. So this, is, this isn't pre-staged. You're seeing it same time as me. Bit of rabbit. Nothing. That tells me Carby's blocked. So I'm going to remove the, uh, the air filter and I'm going to spray some carb cleaner right down the head. Take it off a choke, Mick might help. Straight in there. Give it another pull. See what happens. Okay, so it runs, but the carby is dirty. So I'm not gonna bore you with a carburetor clean because uh, you would have seen those on other videos, but uh, it's a Delorto carb, so I'm gonna take the carburetor off. There are other videos within my playlist and what have you, and within my channel on how to clean these carburetors. Um, so I'm gonna take the carburetor off, give it a good clean up. It may have to go now to Sonic clean up, not quite sure, we'll see how we get on, but it does look rather gummed up. So let me get that carburetor cleaned up and I'll be back to you by two shakes of a tail. Okay, so carburetor has now been cleaned. No fuel leaks as of yet. I have got to put a little tiny piece of gasket paper in there because we've got a bit of a split going on there on that. Now I may actually have, actually, off of a donor engine I took off and I've got a spare fuel cap. Because if I have, and I'll put it over here. If I have, that might be even better. Let's take that off. Now there's no, there's a little tiny pin prick hole in there, but I think they're going to be different sizes, but I can also just remove the tank. No, it fits. Does it fit? Do it go down? Yeah, it do. Oh, to a degree. No, it don't. I'm just trying to kid myself, I think. Oh, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Right. I need to find another, another cap because that's just got a, a, a split in it. You can just put a piece of gasket paper in there and uh, just put a hole in it. Just so it, otherwise, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a fuel jump out of here, see? That's what's going to happen. But no fuel leaks as of yet. I did pressure test a carb with my uh, pressure testing kit from my mate Hank. Cheers for Hank. And uh, had problems initially, but after cleaning the needle a bit more, uh, I managed to have it hold pressure, uh, which is good. So we're ready for a fire up. All I want to do is fire it up. I want to check the cylinder, check the drive, try and get it to run as best I can. I've set the carburetor back to where it was and we'll be good to go. So let's, get, let's just do it, shall we? Um, on the choke. A bit of rabbit. Let's push it forward a bit and we'll see what we get. Let me try and get over that pull cord. Oh, that fired. But now my pull cord stuck out. It's occurring. If it, if it don't rain, it pours. That shouldn't have done that. There's quite a thick pull cord in there too. Now. New pull cord. So there you go. These are live fire ups, people. They're not me mucking about. 
So now I've got to do a pull cord change on it, but what I can do is use a pull cord off of my oven machine. Okay, that's that pull cord now fitted. Um, you don't be doing too many of them, um, but obviously if the, if the machine needs it, it needs it. It's as, it's as simple as that, but they're, they're, they're a bit time consuming, they are. Okay, so now it's all been put back together. <clears throat> Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tiny rag over this fuel tank because I, I will have a fuel leak coming out of here when I go to fire it up, only because um, it's venting out the top. So I just don't want nothing coming out here. It's quite near the exhaust. So in fact, what I'm going to do to get rid of it, actually, I'm going to take the cap off and put this cap on. That's a better cap. There you go. That'll do for now. I'll sort that cap out later on. So the big question is, is do it now run, um, start, does it everything it should do? Um, now that we've done the carburetor clean, uh, pull cord's been done as well. So let's have a look, see if it will, will actually now run and start. On to choke, no fuel leaks, bit of rabbit. Let's pull it over, see what happens. Running a little bit fast is that. See if it's still in the cuts in on full revs. And if a drive works. Start, stops, idles, revs, cylinder works, drive works, everything is absolutely hunky-dory, super, super happy with the way this has gone. <coughs> Quick little engine swap, and we've got a machine now all up and running. That tank is still venting. I need to sort that tank out, but uh, it's nothing big. Just got to sort out the old uh, the fuel tap on uh, the, uh, the cap. That's all it is, so no big problem there. Okay, so there you have it. One Atco Balmoral 17S, uh, which started its lifespan originally uh, with, a, with a, a, came to me with, with a broken engine. Um, but after having a donor part which came off of a Quo Car style Suffolk punch cylinder engine uh, lawnmower, which I got completely free of charge about two years ago, uh, blokes had come and get it, and I'm sure that had a drive issue on it. So I went down, picked it up, and um, bought that back. It's just been flung in my store and not been used since for two years. Done a nice little cheeky little engine swap, which has gone straight on. Done a lot of carburetor clean as well. Got a donor cylinder in, which will probably stay in there now, and I'll get another cylinder off of uh, my mate Graham when I go and see him in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, fuel tap is still, it's fuel tank has still got a bit of a weep to it. I just don't think it's not, it's not sealing right. That's all it is. Just got to figure that out. Um, that's not quite the right one for it, but I'll, uh, I'll sort that out. Um, and it'll work. So yeah, I, do you know what? Pfft. Super happy, gone from a nice little Quo Car Suffolk Punch lawnmower worth about 30, 40 quid uh, to a nice big 17S um, Atco Barrel Mall, which will sell for fantastic money come the season, hopefully. So if you like this little episode of Mixed Mows and Mower Man on how to do an engine swap on an Atco Barrel Mall, then this will be the video, video for you. Give us a big thumbs up, hit the old subscribe button, whack your bell, set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mows very, very soon, but until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, Take her easy.